Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. Savannah Russell is in the house. Yes. <laughs> oh, what? This is called Jaja. Ah, um, yes. Okay. Oh, this photo is bonkers. Okay. So, <laughs> um, what's really great is that because one major component of the podcast is basically it's built around photography and I get, you know, creative expression mm -hmm. and people who are really into that on it, I get to see some great, great art. And I love that I don't know what's going to happen. And then I look at this photo and it's just like, okay, so first of all, it's, mm -hmm. okay, so it's, it's mm, okay, so there is, I guess, a man in drag, kind of, but also yes. very costume, very costumey. Cause it, it, it's, it's super, super stylized. So there's this crazy, really interesting headdress with this like pink, long, straight hair, really strong makeup some flowers in in the hair i mean his hands his arms are really muscular in a beautiful sort of mm -hmm. way like he's very fit mm -hmm. looking straight at the camera wearing this really f interesting dress the the <laughs> color the tone is really fascinating cuz it's very it's like a lot of white but there's a there's some floral in there and he or she is in kind of like balance on a on on a dead tree because there are no bra there are no leaves, not many branches. This like really exposed trunk, but behind yeah. are these like um, sea conifers. Yeah, I don't know if this this was shot in in Hong Kong because the the trees aren't that common. But mm -hmm. um, look. It's it's great because it's really I mean, it looks like a still from a movie that could be super sci-fi over the top. Yes. Um, so what am I looking at? So is this she's on a tree, right? Some sort of um, wood. Yes. Okay, so this is Gabor. This is Zazahu. Okay. One of the drag queens I mentioned earlier, and funny enough, this was shot on llama. Ah. <laughs> And so there you go. This was shot about 10 minutes from my place, okay. walking into the jungle. So this was a a series that I did with Gabor, and he had this vision for the storyline. And so there's a video, which I still need to edit. But throughout <laughs> that, we, <laughs> we did some photos as well. And I, I loved the photos from each of the parts that we did. But this was my favorite one um mm. and actually so he's made the whole thing he made the headset he made the dress and did his makeup on the hill just over here <laughs> nice I, so yeah I, I love the ambiguity first of all of like even in terms of how we're, we're referring to him her um mm -hmm. you know, there's that really interesting like i i really love that so so first of all his hands and his arms are yes. so strong looking you know like yes super super like there's a real strength in there so yeah. on the one hand there's this real kind of like intense like masculinity yes and then the fact that she is this really long kind of pinkish because that's mm -hmm. also the color tone could be blonde but in, in the in the image it's rendered as kind of pink and and the lips are super full and red and they have really intense eyebrow makeup and it's just and there's a wisping, you know, like not a wispiness. Mm -hmm. There's like um, a fairy tale, dark fairy tale mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, it's really, I, I, really. I like that description. <laughs> yeah. So so beyond just well, okay. So is there a story going on here? In this in this particular set of photos, the idea of the, okay, so the idea of the whole story or the video is initially. She is stuck in a place where she doesn't want to be and she escapes. She gets into the water and she comes out the water in a different outfit. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. But, uh, this is towards the end where she's found where, where she needs to be. So it's very, I guess, euphoric, triumphant in the video. Mm -hmm. So 
yeah, this was the powerful moment for it. Okay, she's made it. But funny enough, I think the the arms, the strength in the arms is because she's really trying to hold on for dear life on that tree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just trying to balance herself. But um yeah, I I love that. It was a great day. Um, just venturing around the jungle with a bunch of gear and drag things, mm-hmm. and it was great. I think once you surrender yourself to just the moment of saying, "Look, mm-hmm. we're we're just going to be creative. We're just we don't mm-hmm. know what's going to happen." Exactly. It's kind of, it's that jeopardy. Yes. Um, there was no plan of this whole setup for this photo. It was just like even for the location for where we shot we were just we just walked Mm -hmm. and found it and it's just you know i i whenever i do my shoots actually i feel like that's the way that i like to work is very work with what i have like i have an idea of what i want but Mm -hmm. it's very rare that i have to meticulously plan into detail of what i need to do and i enjoy the ones where i don't have to do that Mm. so uh, not to, to not to turn this into a, a, a religious discussion or whatever, but mm-hmm. so you said your dad is Indian. So my mom is Indian, actually. Your mom. My dad is Scottish. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Scotland is the India of Europe. I don't know what that means. No. What I mean. Well, like, they say that Edinburgh is the Disneyland of Scotland. So. Oh. Okay. Sure. Okay. So <laughs> can we? Um, make a connection of Indian art mm-hmm. or Hindu sort of, I don't know if your mom's Hindu or not, or, mm-hmm. but like in terms of, of the, um, the fantastic, like, is that, is there, are those elements inside you as well on some mm-hmm. level? Like where, because in a way this could this image I'm looking at has the kind of um, mythical, this, this feeling of myth and mm-hmm. mythology uh-huh. traced oh, through I it. See how you, okay. Yeah, you kind of know where I'm going? Yes, I do, actually. Um, I wouldn't say... For me, I, well, growing up, my Indian influence wasn't crazy heavy. Mm-hmm. I think it was more... Philippines, mm-hmm. but also I went to in an international school, so heavily on the Scottish side, actually. Ah. Um, but the parts of the Indian aspect that I had were definitely like this: the music, the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, at home, in my in my grandma's house, there's you know different pieces of um, Indian art sculptures and, and and things like that. So there were definitely bits of it. I think I definitely enjoy the the natural aspects that they use and how they, you know, embezzle things and, and, and all that. So, but I wouldn't say that it was an influence actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think the, the influence in this particular photo, I think, especially when I hang out with, with Gabor or, you know, any drag personality for that matter, it's just like total empowerment and just being a boss ass bitch, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's what we needed to go for in that particular session. Um, right. Just, you know, being powerful in who you are. Yes. Okay, so what is... What, what, what are the next six months looking like for you in terms of either art projects, in terms of work projects, in terms of expression? Like, is there something around the corner? Like, how are you, are you growing? Yeah, so there's actually quite a few, excitingly. Um, in uh, the beginning of September, I am in a show in the Typo Art Center, at the Typo Art Center, um, for the Arts Festival. I'm doing the art direction for it, and so it's with my friend Maggie and Soraya Chow and Chunto. And it's, be- it's a story based off The Alchemist. I, mm-hmm. I'm sure you must have read it, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. So... My role in this is I'm doing the the stage setup, but I'm doing it through projections and light reflections and and color fills and things like that. So that is an exciting one. Um, I have um, an exhibition towards the end of the year with the Hong Kong Arts Collective. Nice. Um, that that will be really fun. I think this is for the Gay Games as well. So 
I was even thinking, as you said, that maybe print the bilateral one quite big. I was like, oh, maybe I'll use that one. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, um, and I've also, I, I have applied for a residency at Heart House Hong Kong, which will allow me to be more involved in other, with other artists for collaboration. Um, within Hong Kong and also be able to hold the workshops for the art mixed with the mental health thing and so mm -hmm. hopefully just do just do more 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 a lot <laughs> right and yeah. when if like so in terms of how how has the world come to you so for example how I our paths crossed was mm -hmm. you know mutual friends and then mm -hmm. Uh, like Je like I I reissued Jenny's episode because it was mm -hmm. just it was two years ago uh, when we recorded uh, it yes. and yes. and it was like oh here you go and so how has the world kind of surprised you because mm. because a lot of times we can't we can't anticipate or or we have these happy accidents when when all of a sudden somebody pops up out of nowhere and says hey um. I like what you're doing with your time. So mm -hmm. how has the world surprised you in terms of either your creative expression, in terms of your work, in terms of for you to mm -hmm. learn? Mm -hmm. Let me think. That's a very good question. How Finally, one good question. <laughs> no, they're all been great <laughs> questions. But now I'm just like boggled, like, oh, that's so interesting because I think more ways than one, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, I think especially with the way Hong Kong works is... Um, you you have access to a lot of different industries and people in that industry and if you just push and do you know you trust the process of what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. that things do come back to you in the way that you need them to whether it's meeting the right person or you know somebody messages you saying hey i saw you in this or i met you through this I really want to do something and it's just you know I'm also very thankful for people in Hong Kong who love to collaborate and mm -hmm. that they're very happy to just not care about how much it's worth or how much time it's going to take and just you know are there to create mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the greatest things that I've been very happily surprised with is just people are very happy to be like yeah sure I'll come and help you that's awesome I would love to shoot this with you I would love to create this with you do this project with you and whatnot um amazing and, yeah I think you'll like this uh this little story um so oddly enough shooting it raw is the podcast mm -hmm. it is based on uh, a commercial that was shot for Sony about mm -hmm. a photo project that I had done. Uh -huh. And uh, the photo project I'd done was uh, 350 weeks long, and it was 350 conceptually different self-portraits. Wow. And uh, the reason I started it was because I was living on Lama Island <laughs> in 2004, and I, was, I had this creative crisis where back then... There was no, I, I had no community, I had no creative outlet, and I just needed something. And so I mm -hmm. gave myself this big project. And so it's really interesting that that 20, I mean, yeah, it makes me feel a little old, but 20 <laughs> years later, almost 20 years later, mm -hmm. you're living on Lama, and the experience has really changed. Because back then, I don't, I don't you know, it, it felt... Like, Hong Kong felt like a creative wasteland to me, you know? I can imagine that 1,000%. Um, mm. But you go on. What were you saying about Lama? <laughs> Nothing. It's changed. And it's a beautiful thing. It it's has, like listening to yeah. you talk about that is great. Yes. And I, I, you know, moving to Lama, I had no idea about anything. For me, in my mind, I was just like, wow, it's a beautiful place. The ocean's great. I'm just going to live here and do that. And then... Another surprise, lo and behold, the amount of artists here, creative people here. Mm -hmm. And like, it's led me, so that space, the Lama Art Collective that I did my exhibition on last year, I ended up taking over the space with a few other people. And now I'm able to be fully invested in the art community on Lama and, you know, 
doing different exhibitions for different people and you know just you know making sure that it just is alive on Lama. I um, love it. I can't imagine what it was like in 2004. <laughs> <laughs> it was in black and white. I was going to say there must have joking. been nothing here. <laughs> just joking. No, no, it was fine. It was nice. It was nice. Uh, I, actually, that sounds lovely. <laughs> yeah. Savannah Russell, that's it. Look, yes. you know, we've been talking for an hour. Thank you so much. This has been really great. No, thank you so much for having me. I have had so much fun having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always nice to, to kind of dive in and say, well, you know, what's going on there? And so, you know, I and know. Yeah. I really lo like I love your energy and I love just, yeah, this is so good. Oh, and thank you so much. One more time, your website for people to go check out your work. My website is savannahkrussell.com. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, have a great evening. You too, Ran. Thank you so much once again. Bye. Bye. So, is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So, if you like what you've seen, and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes, shooting it raw.